Hello, and thank you for joining me for a topic of conversation that feels a bit gloomy, but it does have an impact on the customer experience provided by contact centers. If you have lost a loved one, you'd have to have gone through the process of sorting out their affairs, contacting their energy provider, their telephone and broadband provider, and oh my goodness, how many other services that they will have been using. It's daunting, it's time consuming, can take you months, and you have to keep repeating yourself over and over again. And for the contact center, if you don't have notification that a customer has died, then you could be continuing to make contact and really potentially upsetting their loved ones. So how often do you review your process in this area? Well, Life Ledger raised this subject with me, um, Bereavement CX. And so I thought I would find out a little bit more. I want, I, some of you will know that I want to see us promoting more great contact center customer experiences. And I think today you're gonna hear how this um, experience, this bereavement CX can be more appropriate. So please welcome Louise Downing, who is the vulnerable customer specialist at O2 and Elaine Lee, who is a CX consultant that focuses on vulnerable circumstances. Welcome. Well, well, afternoon. Hi. Good to see you guys. So first, Elaine, how big is this issue? It's uh, it's one of spreads. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but every single one of us will die um, at some point. And so it, it is coming to us all. And there will be hopefully loved ones and family members who we leave behind. Um, but those people will be going through a mourning process, a grieving process, and having to do admin at the same time. So on average, there's about 10 and a half thousand deaths registered each week in the UK. Um, and on average, again, most family members have to notify about 22 different organizations. So you can see that this is hundreds of thousands of conversations happening every week. And very often, or historically, it's not been a once and done conversation. You have to keep going back and having conversations with companies and each company time and time, multiple times. And what we have to forget is that, what we mustn't forget is that those people are going through a grieving process, but also they may be facing some financial vulnerability because not only have they lost a loved one, but often if it's an unexpected passing, um, there's the unexpected cost of a funeral, which is around just under £4,000 at the moment in the UK, and uh, four and a half if you want a burial. So there's financial shock going on as well. So we're often dealing with both grief and financial vulnerability when we're um, handling bereavement calls, contacts. Wow. So it, it's a big issue and it's, it's not exactly an issue that's going to be going away. So no. And it's a conversation that we one of the things that I often talk about is that if you're having those conversations, remember we've got both sides of the dialogue. You've got a customer and you've got an agent and it's not an easy conversation for either of them. So it's 10,000 plus the agents involved each week. So um, I, I completely agree and I wanna um, pull that up actually, Elaine, is, is something that we are going to um, talk about through this um, session mm -hmm. is Actually, you're right, there are two parts to this. There is the impact on the customer, um, the, the, the bereaving person, but there's also the impact on the advisor and, and the advisor and what they go through um, yeah. in, in order to deal with that interaction. Louise, can I come to you? You're at O2. How do you see this playing out in the contact centre? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it can be very difficult for contact centre advisors often the, the customer, you know, the person that's lost someone will come through to our frontline advisors and that can be quite a distressing conversation. Um, we do have a ring fence team within O2, so we have a bereavement team, but again, quite distressing conversation sometimes. Just asking for that information, so we need to see a copy of the death certificate. They might not have that yet, so they, they phone us and inform us, but actually we can't do anything on the account until that death certificate's received, which can be quite upsetting to to inform somebody of that um, and we, we're just asking quite a lot of questions at a really sensitive time and you know it, it, it the phone calls can be really upsetting for both the advisors and the customers especially when we don't have the information that we need and and, and often as well 
they might not register what's been said to them. You know, if they're upset, they're, they're hurt, they, we could give them some information and that might not register. And this will be phoning back repeatedly or we're having to contact them, which, you know, they, it's not a great phone journey sometimes for our customers. Elaine, is that something that you've seen? Um, and, and you obviously go into a lot of contact centres and you see it, this kind of um, this experience being played out. Uh, yeah, uh, in almost every centre I've ever been in, the, this is a topic that comes up and there is absolutely pain on both sides because the frontline advisors want to get things right. They don't go into the job to follow a procedure and, and just make people's lives miserable. They want to get it right and they aspire to do a really good job and support the customer. Um, but it, there is a process to death and it's a difficult one and you do have to go through waiting for the death certificate and at the moment if you factor in we've got postal strikes going on those things get, get delayed coming out to you um, and although the modern world has moved on and technology has helped massively there are, there is still a process to follow to make sure that things get everything gets ticked off the list in terms of completing the process so it's handled um, and it's it's hard because it's everybody wants to do the right thing or most people want to do the right thing um but it's a it's a, an emotional conversation to be had and so you've got customers stealing themselves to tell you um they don't know how if they're going to react on a conversation sometimes somebody can show some empathy and, and that work might trigger an episode of being upset or somebody if they've had a difficult experience with another supplier might come onto the phone feeling fairly aggressive and um expecting to be in a difficult conversation so if we can make that better it really helps for both sides of the conversation um and it, but it's about streamlining those processes so that we know what we're saying we know what we're asking for and that we give people bite-sized bits of information at the relevant and appropriate moments so that they only have to retain the relevant pieces of information and then come back to move on to the next one in the journey and and it's interesting what you're saying there about um, the from a customer's perspective. You know they they're not going to necessarily remember things. They've got a lot going on in their in their heads, um, and and therefore it's it's one step at a time. And they don't know how they're going to react, um, whether it's uh, empathy or or not really knowing. You know the advisor not knowing how to handle the conversation. And they and don't have a copy of the script. Sorry, Lee. They don't have a copy of the script or the the process that the, the advisor is working to. And each organisation has a slightly different process. So they they don't know what you need or when you need it. So you know, signposting can be really helpful to walk people through. We're going to need this then, here and now, and then two weeks time we need this. Uh, that can be you know just sharing that can help alleviate some of the problem. And and therefore it's difficult for the advisor. Um, because they they're faced with um, this conversation and and they don't know what they're going to um, get from the customer yep. whether they are going to be um, you know completely understanding or whether the customer is going to be really angry with them um, so it makes for some pretty uncomfortable calls for for those frontline advisors. Yeah, and I just thought, Louise, with your bereavement team, those people that that team are handling the, this kind of conversation all day. day in day out. Yeah. Um, and they never know what they're going to be up against. It's, I guess it's a bit like being on a live performance on stage. You yeah. sort of know the conversation that's going to happen, but you don't know how it's going to play out. No, it's not a one size fits all at all. And, you know, different circumstances can bring different obstacles. And, you know, they're absolutely amazing team. I don't know how they do that job day and out, but they're brilliant. But yeah, it can be just such a difficult conversation. And Louise, is it is it more difficult because um, I mean I don't know where your bereavement team are, and but there will be bereavement teams that are just working in the office. There'll yeah. also be bereavement teams that are working from home and maybe in in their own space, working in their dining rooms, and they are dealing with these conversations. Is is that something you've seen? And I, that must make it harder. Yeah, I think that definitely the pandemic did make it harder because previous to that, they were all in an office together and I think they would debrief. I think they would, you know, speak to each other about the difficult calls and that sort of went away. I mean, and there is communication that they can they can do with each other. But yeah, it, did, it, it, it really did it make it harder. And um, as things have, have returned to normal, they've gone to a more hybrid way of working which seems to be working well at the minute but yeah it was some really isolated difficult conversations during that time yeah so, you're right and then, you know, you've got 
um, when you're in an office environment, you can somebody will notice if you're upset and perhaps make you a cup of tea or take you outside mm -hmm. for a quick five minute break. But there's nobody at home to do that for you. And and I think that's really important that we consider home working and handling this kind of conversation because just outside the other side of the door, when you, Lee and Louise, you've seen my mad puppy going wild out there this morning. Um, but when I'm trying to, if I'm trying to concentrate on a customer who's going through a difficult conversation, she doesn't want to know about my puppy. She doesn't want to hear it barking and yapping and therefore you've got to put your professional face on but within three seconds you don't get that decompression time because you walk out the door of your office or your, your living room and your kids are there and the family are there and dinner needs making and and yeah. so there's a di there's just no decompression time when you work from home so yeah. it's a we, it's important that we think about how we support those staff members um so that they're appropriately looked after because it is difficult conversation subject matter Definitely. um and, and we often talk about, um, like you say, supporting the mental health and, and really protecting advisors, uh, their, their mental health and being able to deal with, with these kinds of conversations. But Louise, um, this is where the good news is. You guys have uh, had a look at that process and you've made a real difference for, uh, for both customers and for uh, your frontline colleagues. Tell us what you've done. What have you changed so we have implemented, well, we've we've created real, got a really great relationship with Life Ledger. So Life Ledger are sort of a private version of the government's Tell Us Once, um, and they they enable us to they enable a customer first of all to inform several companies of a death, and and then Life Ledger will then let those companies know so they will the customer will upload a copy of the death certificate and that death certificate then we we can log in and we can view everything about that customer in their account and the certificate which just enables us to take any necessary on actions on that account much much quicker and often we don't even need to have a conversation with the customer unless they choose to have want and have a conversation with us um and this has just been life changing it has and, 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 and for a lot of brief customers out there customers going through bereavement this has, has really made a difference um we, we've so much so I mean, we've added it to our web websites so on our bereavement pages on our website we sign post to life ledger but just just because we think it's so brilliant it's it, it just enables us to take the actions that that customer needs without the need to go back and forward for information because the information is just there and you said um when we were talking earlier you 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 were telling us about how and um you know we obviously had a, a chat before we went live and these things can take months and months and months and like you say you know you um you've you've got one copy of the death certificate or you might have several and you you forked out for several and you've got to send it off to one organization and then you've got to wait for it to come back if you get it back send it off to another organization but but actually when it's all in one place um louise you mentioned how quickly you can do it yeah i mean we have had instances where a life ledger notification has come into us in the morning and we've got all that done dusted close down or whatever actions that customer needs by the afternoon so it's that it, it, it's that quick it can be done within a day and that again is is, is life-changing i think the implementing life ledger as well was something that we found so easy we didn't have to make adjustments to any of our systems you know we've basically they send us an email through we then log go onto that email click a link log into the account and everything is there all, all the information is there about that the deceased customer which is just brilliant Great. so that, i i want to explore how that has um really played out from a customer experience and for the experience for the frontline advisors and whether you've, you've really seen a difference there so first of all from a customer experience perspective what what are you seeing what are you you hearing We've had some great feedback. I mean, we've had feedback from Life Ledger on what customers, on customers' comments to them, but we've also had it through just through our bereavement team. So they've come and said, Oh, it's been so easy. Thank you. You have just made my life so much easier. I wish every company did, you know, had access to this. It, it it's brilliant. It's 
the, the feedback's great from the from the people that want to give the feedback it's not something we ask for and it, it's a sensitive time mm. nice that people have actually volunteered that information and said wow this is great this is so helpful um, and, and what impact is that having therefore on your bereavement team Oh, they love it. They love. It. They wish every. They wish every bereavement came through Life Ledger because it's just so quick. And if, but but it also gives actual um, customer multi-channel options if they want to speak to us. They can. You know, we, there's a, there's um, a, a free text box where they can put any information they want or give me a call. You know, and as we said earlier, customers are often on a roller coaster journey during a bereavement time, and you know they can have days where they're feeling right I need to get everything sorted today and days where they just don't want to speak to anyone and they don't feel like you know they can deal with anything and that's the beauty of, of life ledger they, they can have that if they want to speak to us and they want to have a really detailed chat about what to do with the account or you know often with a mobile they might have credit on the account or they might want to put the mobile into their name rather than you know closing it all down and it gives them that so we either type it or pick up the phone so yeah brilliant for both so that that must be saving um that must be saving time within yes. the contact center and it freeing up time to either take more or, or um, do other things yeah it does yeah and i think yeah it, it has it, it's increased productivity um reduced call handling time so yeah it's it's an all-round winner <laughs> um <laughs> for everyone yeah yeah the team absolutely love it and the, and the you know the whole process is much smoother wow and and it's i mean it's clearly making a, a huge difference for you guys at o2 elaine um i mean this this sounds like it's a, a great way to create a much more appropriate contact center customer experience and um and you know organizations are starting to start using this tool and promote this mm. tool What's your impact? What's your view on the impact it will have on on the industry and and um, and how things can just get better? Well, personally, I love it as a tool because I think it what what they've done in terms of their offering is think about the process and how does it work and walk through in the customer's shoes. What are the things I need to provide when? And from the organisation's perspective, what information do we need? And and just made it really simple. And that, that having walked through the journey and really understood it, and I know that the team at Life Letter have come from a background of having had difficulties with bereavement notifications themselves. So they've really understood it from lived experience. And that's really in terms of customer journey mapping, doing that bit well first makes such a difference to the experience that you can then deliver. Um, and so I love it as a tool because I think it really helps both the customer and the organisation. So we talk about it lots. And I think it provides the industry with an opportunity to support customers at a moment where they really need support and do it properly and handhold them through with control and empathy and allows the agents to express their empathetic skills and they use their soft skills in the most appropriate way whilst dealing with the business of death, which is difficult and personal and painful. Um, and if you don't want to talk to somebody, you don't have to. There's no rule that says you have to do that. So I think it allows us to do what we've been wanting to do for a long time and make every customer a person, humanise them and deliver a really personalised service. So if you want to talk to me today, I'll talk to you. If you want to just email me, that's fine. If you want to submit your documents and we'll never have a conversation, that's perfect too. And it allows us as organisations and as an industry to really treat the customer as an individual with personalised service at the moment where they really, really need it. And so if we can do it with death and bereavement, which is one of the most difficult subjects, I think it gives us a huge opportunity and me optimism about let's do it for others, for other um, services too, because I think we really can. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll rant a little bit about this, but I just, I just think I'm really passionate because I just think it's such, if we can get the service right and the support mechanisms in place, and as you say, Louise, it takes the stress out from the agent as well, which makes them happier staff, which means our staff retention rate should improve and our staff performances are improved. So I think solutions like this are really good for everybody. And as an industry allows us to show we can be really supportive and contact centre staff aren't the devil's work. <laughs> they are here to... No, nobody goes into it, I think I said before, about wanting to do a bad job. The 
contact centre frontline staff go in wanting to do a really good job for people, and this enables them to do it. So that's why I'm such a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Elaine. Do you know what? It has been fascinating. Um, really exploring this and really putting a, a spotlight on it. Um, I, I am going to come back to Elaine. Is there anything else that you want to add just before I close? Yeah, um, well, we, we did talk about this before, uh, Lee, but one of the things I kind of work with my clients on is keep a focus on there's a, an American poet and civil rights activist called Maya Angelou, who gave us a, well, has a quote that I just live by because I think it really helps keep your attention. And she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And so if we focus on the emotional side of the interactions we're having and don't just make it a very state process driven, data driven piece and remember that there's a human involved, it really changes our outlook. And I think that's for me, that's a, something I would advocate that we, we all remember to do. Thank you so much. I'd like to say a really huge thank you to Life Ledger for bringing this really delicate issue uh, to my attention um, and to Louise and to Elaine for sharing your experiences and your views on how the contact centre can make this difficult time a little bit easier for customers. Thank you so much for joining us and, and hey, get in touch with Life Ledger if, you, if you're looking for some help. <laughs>